And so at last we arrive at a deciding game number three. It's Secret versus PR. Best of three. Winner's bracket round one match here for the Summit 2 Europe by G2A.com. I'm LD, and you're still Merlini, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Game three is underway, guys. Draft has begun. Let's see what the teams are cooking up for us. We've got Secret on the Dire side. Power Rangers on the Radiant. First pick goes the way Secret, and... You mentioned the Scarth Mage is the main problem, Ben. It seems Secret agree. They ban it here first phase. Yeah, it was clearly the issue for them. And just a long range initiate with Conk Shot just completely ruined their early game. Generally, they're pretty good about avoiding ganks, but with Conk Shot leading in, there's just no way to dodge it unless you want to sacrifice a lot of farm, which they don't like to do. Secret will pick up Elder Titan in the first phase. Usually, when they pick Morphling, they actually either have Elder Titan on their side or the opposing team has banded out in the first phase so I actually think that pick caught them off guard um, last game because Puppy, I mean Kiro really couldn't do anything as the Immortal in that game besides split push yeah he really couldn't when it came to the team fights he still melted like even with the the AC the Vlads the Basilius it didn't matter Luna's auto attack still ripped him a new one they stole Eclipse damage he BKB'd I just right clicked him to death anyway. Well, it would have been a lot better had Bristleback not been under farm. He died t way too many times in the top lane. And on top of that, that one disastrous T1 fight where they got 4 for 0 or maybe 5 for 0, but they lost way too many heroes and the farm discrepancy was really large too. If they were an even farm, I think with that build, he wouldn't be like he wouldn't be dying in like 2 seconds. I don't even think it was 2 seconds. It's probably like one a little over 1 second that he survived. Yeah, they ban up the Slark here in the second phase, so Secret still showing Ditya Ra some respect. And finally, for the first time in this best of three, Death Prophet will be touched. Neither picked nor banned in games one and two, but here she emerges first phase. Up against Tidehunter, Elder Titan, good burst damage. But two melee heroes can struggle a bit against this DP. Secret's pretty used to playing versus Death Prophet, though. I think most teams in 6.82c are very used to playing Death Prophet, and... Uh, they either, they usually play in one of two ways. One is heavy ganking in the mid lane with a Sven and a roaming Potom. And Sven's been banned out from Power Rangers, so they know that they need a protected Death Prophet in that aspect. But at the same time, there are a lot of other heroes that can also combo um, with a Marana if they want to go that route. The other way is to just take advantage of the very long cooldown from Death Prophet, 145 seconds, and just take constant fights. Uh, and also be good at disengaging in case... Um, something goes wrong. So they usually like trade evenly in terms of hero kills with Death Prophet Ultimate and then after that they go for another push as soon as the revives are up and either take a tower uncontested or they force the opponents to fight without uh, exorcism which is generally a really bad fight for them. Well with that the draft continues. Secret are going to go for their Keeper of the Light. Generally when we've seen them go this route it's with a Medusa backing it up as uh, Keeper of the Light Chakra Magic very good with that hero. They have a lineup they can do Ancient Swell, so we're probably looking at the offlane Simba, a Tidehunter, your support Big Daddy Elder Titan. The one weakness of the support duo is they really don't do much early, generally, but somehow Big Daddy finds a way to surprise on his Elder Titan. And Puppy will just AFK in the woods, most likely. It's generally only an issue if their offlaner dies a lot, which usually doesn't happen if they're tied, or if they aggro try, which Power Rangers didn't do either of the games, so I don't think they will this game. Um, although, let's see, what aggro try options are there? Luna's one of the better ones. Um, Razor, still in the pool too. Razor, definitely a potential option for Power Rangers if they want to do aggro. He was banned the first two games. I think second stage, at least once, maybe twice. Wasn't a huge priority pick so far. Also, Jakiro's been ignored. Something that was prioritized a bit more in the previous two games, so it's a very different draft overall. And now Power Rangers will go into an Enigma. They got the enormous team fight combo in their own right. Still, I mean, you're paired up versus Elder Titan and Keeper and Tide, so 
the push from Enigma is not going to be that strong. The ultimate is also not going to be that effective too, since you have even Elder Titan's ultimate to interrupt yeah. the BKB. So it's it's so so. Puck but it's difficult. a good greedy jungler and secret likely to go very greedy with their keeper of the light jungle. Mm -hmm. mm, let's see for secret. They get the S4 puck. I mean, I imagine you ban Dusa here, unless you want to fight against it. Well, they can also... Um, huh, they ban Anti-Mage. They can also be... They, Secret can also aggro try it if they want to, as well, and try and contest the Enigma. Um, but that's pretty unlikely. Uh, I don't think Secret... Pretty annoying spam lane, but not really much threat of ganking him in the jungle. Yeah, what's Kuro going to play? Medusa is kind of the obvious choice. They ban out his Necrolite. They actually chose to ban Anti Mage instead. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, what I'd say Kuro play? Medusa is the obvious choice here. Um, Gyro's, I think, pretty good too. What's it gonna be? They have a lot of uh, initiation and tank for him for a Gyrocopter. They want to go uh, the mass AOE damage. Which would fit right into their lineup. That it would. Seeker will remove a Viper. There is still a Razor out there. As kind of the the safe option. There won't be any Slark this game. I'm trying to think, what else do they run? I, I think it's Ditya's hero. Razor is only good versus Tidehunter in lane, and aside from that, he doesn't really offer that much because Seeker can counter pick around it. Um, pick a hero that doesn't really get affected by Static Link or just a highly mobile hero. Like even, I doubt they'll pick something like PA, but someone with that uh, high mobility. Um, and also they have no target spells either. Not at least not on uh, Elder Titan and Puck. Maybe some minor ones from Keeper Light and Tide with Mana League and Gush. But those aren't your, your really go to uh, go to spells to kill a Razor. So, so other Ditya Ra heroes. We saw the Luna. He's played some Clinks. Viper was banned. PA. Once little Naga, I think Naga Slark would be and pretty good. Luna seem to be the two staples, and Clink's probably the third. But those are both banned, so Clink's is out there. Naga's out there. Yeah, I like the Naga for Power Rangers. It, it's okay. uh, PA. PA's difficult. Like she's not gonna have an easy time versus Tide, so Rubik's gonna have to spend a very amount of time zoning out a Tide, which actually is pretty difficult to do. On top of that, they have a lot of magic bursts to kill her and not that much physical. I still think Jaro is a pretty good pick here. For Secret, it seems like an, a Dusa game. What yeah. else do they run for Kuro? That we. Oh. They probably want an MKB carrier too, and Dusa is not that great of an MKB carrier. Or I guess you could get someone who builds a hex. Hmm. Yeah, but they they almost never draft that sort of hero for Kuro. Yeah. Besides Necrolite, maybe. And even then, he doesn't really build a hex. It, Kuro has played some clinks, I, I guess, in his own right, but it seems very... It's also been one of their least effective heroes for him, from what I recall. What else is there? There's... Yeah, there's really not a ton. I mean, Void used to be a great pick versus PA, but now you've got to farm the MKB. It's not really a Kuro hero. Generally speaking, unless they want to go totally off the wall here, a Wind Ranger incoming Riki. <laughs> I like Riki. Yeah, not sure if it's a Riki game though. It's a lot of AOE and a pretty scary death ball. Yeah, we haven't found too many great anti PA carries, but it's usually the supports and the other cores that really just burst her down constantly. One on one matchup, she's pretty good versus almost any carry. Hmm. I'm I'm honestly not sure what else there is. I mean, unless we're just looking at oh Terrorblade actually was Terrorblade ignored this draft. I think I Terrorblade think was ignored, but they got Naga, so better AOE combo for their lineup. You caught on Naga. It's really Ew. difficult to um, outlay game that. That's very gross. It is. And yep. now they've got a solution for Black Hole, too, from the song and the net. Plus your your Earth Splitter, which goes through BKB. It is going to be a very difficult game for J4 after the laning stage to, to really offer a lot in team fights. And I guess now you really have to favor Secret in those 5v5 clashes, unless Rubik comes up flush. Still, Power Rangers has a much stronger like mid-game uh, like T1 fighting-capable uh, crew.
They can always fight, basically. Even if Black Hole's down, everything else is very low cooldown. Well, not DP ultimate. Yeah, that's true. But I think they're pretty good at just, like, getting early mech on Enigma or whatever it may be that can help them push. And then um, kind of brute forcing through Keeper to Light's damage. And then after that, I think, is where the solution, uh, or the no, uh, secret really needs a solution. Keep trying to call them Navi. But I don't know. PA... Not your best late game carry versus a Naga Siren. Generally pretty good versus the just straight man fighters, but Kuro with BOTs and on top of that recall, like they're just gonna get split push. If you thought split push was bad last game, it's gonna be much worse this game. Yeah, very mobile lineup. PR not the best assassins either. They've got some good burst damage, but they have the limited. Phantom Assassin. <laughs> it's a deceptive name though. Like unless she gets a lucky crit, you can just TP out of that. Stealth Art. assassin should they have? Yeah, they the should have gone for the Riki, dude. That's the real. That's the real assassin. All right, let's get into this one. Secret five manning through the radiant jungle doesn't look like they'll get in range for anything. Just want to take this woods over early. Pretty strong at level one, actually. You've got Puppy on his keeper of the light. Look to him to be AFK jungling as much as possible. Big Daddy, no telling the elder titan. Kuroki, your Naga siren that puts Simba headed towards the safe lane on the tide. S four. On the puck secret, they took game one convincingly. They did not close out game two, and it was PR who prevailed, forcing this deciding game three loser to the loser's bracket winner uh, into your winner bracket finals, closing in on that European. They're, I think they're aggro trying. Yeah, they well definitely are at this point, setting the tide all the way top. That's a really questionable S aggro try. Super aggressive too. They get the century war down. It's not really contested at all by PR, who aren't that great at level one. Let's see if they get some D-Wards or just rotations out. And speaking of PR, let's introduce our Power Rangers. We've got J4 on the Enigma. That puts Dit Ra onto the solo mid PA for now. Cheshire Cat on the Timber Saw. And going safely will be Shacho on the Death Prophet. And Soniko handling your Rubik. Well, nobody's home in that Radiant Jungle. J4's already had a top. A lot of investment here from Secret that may well get nothing in return. That is four wards they drop. Three of them specifically to try to shut down this woods. I wonder if they can actually kill Simba with the Enigma in the uh, off lane though. And Big Daddy, go to try and scout him out and they will see him. We'll try and drop a spirit here to steal some CS, but already his eye lines have split, so. Well, he's also popped the clarity too, so yeah, that's, um, that's true. really bad for J4. And he will be contested here by Big Daddy. At the very least going to leech his experience. j is kind of stuck here though, unless he wants to spend a lot of money on centuries. Another spirit comes out. Big Daddy has three clarities of his own. He gets a ton of damage from those Eidolons too, so actually Elder Titan's one of the better heroes to contest. Um, Plus 28. J4 He's with. gonna start clubbing. He has another spirit in 10 mana. Or actually, sorry, uh, he has boots at 100 first. 10 mana. This might be a first blood. Spirit comes through. J4 has a level 1 Malefice, and he's just gonna do as a single spirit. Closing in, I think he'll take two more auto attacks. Up the hill he goes. Malefice done wearing off. One more! Big Daddy! There you go. Comes up big. For secret, finding the first blood, shutting down the Elder Titan jungle. Who said Elder Titan needs levels to be effective? Well, that means that Elder, uh, Enigma pretty much can't go to opponent's jungle at this point. He got solo killed by an Elder Titan, and it's probably only going to get worse. So I don't really know where he's going to go, though. He only has access to, what, two camps right now? Mud Golems on one, nonetheless. He will get some sort of farm, I guess, from the Wildkins. Yeah, that's really bad for Enigma. He... Has sentry wards, but it's, I mean, it's going to whiff on the first D ward. So at best, he'll get this one big camp D warded. Or maybe he even says screw it and just goes for the medium. This camp is spawning, but the problem is that the dire team's a Whoa. good amount of vision in the neighborhood. He doesn't see any of the sentry wards. Oh my god. Okay. So, well, game, game was hard. I don't know what J4 even does now. Can't go aggressive jungle, has nowhere to farm. He, he These are sentry wards, so they'll wear off in about a minute and a half, but the damage is already done. It's, it's up to Soniko to make some plays here. He's got out the courier mid lane. It's not three minutes yet. Will he get the courier kill? He will. He was carrying a few consumables. Not the biggest loss. But yeah, Clarity's and Tango's down. And more importantly, much needed gold for PR. I don't know. S4 trying to get the kill on him. He's got silence. He's got orb. Orb cooling down in one second. Uh, looks like Soniko should make it out in time. Although, he stops seeing a tree now. That haste rune will wear off. But he's managed to waste S4's time and... Again, it's the one of the PR supports who's coming up big. Soniko, two games in a row. And on top of that, the team. snagging the bounty rune, too. Easy cash. Oh, it's Dit Yara who will bottle it, it looks like. 
So you have PA in the mid lane, not the Death Prophet, and Death Prophet suffering a little bit too. I've seen a lot of Death Prophets just like they have a bad start in the first 15 minutes and they can't do anything else for the rest of the game. So not really sure if that's going to be the case for him. Looks like he's still getting uh, a lot of decent farm, but I mean PA, big winner, 17-2 and two in the mid. Yeah, it's just so easy to see us with the dagger, and it's not like S4 can particularly punish it with this poor man's shield. And other good news for PR, they're running the Timbersaw versus Tidehunter matchup, but again, as you'd expect, Timbersaw coming out on top here. But this time they're on the winning side of their engagement. It's already 16-7, and seven, still Fly doing okay, and getting his levels as he is a solo, but you know, they're, they're doing well in those two lanes. The Enigma, the big loser, but he still managed to hit level 3 at 4 minutes, so that's honestly not too bad. Considering. As long as you can sack the bib camp, is, it's fine. Uh oh. They go on Cheshire Cat here, but he doesn't have any points in Timber Chain. Do they really want to commit to this, though? He's going to manage to get off a Whirling Blade. Whirling Death on them, not Whirling Blade. I always get that mixed up. Man, two points in Reactive is way too strong versus right click. Time wasted for S4. Spent a lot of time chasing around the support. Rubik in the jungle. Now he's trying to gang Timber Saw. That's not successful. Still sitting at 20 CS, though. Managing to stay in the. The ballpark here with Ditya Ra in spite of it all. And in the off lane, the other good news for Secret is that Kuro's doing very well. He's out of regen though, so he actually can't get that much CS now. That's true. At the same time, Rubik's out of regen. Shadeshaw is out of re Pretty much everyone's out of regen in this bottom lane. Yeah, but, but they're going to get eyes on Big Daddy. This could be big. It's only a level 1 Malphys though. Can they get in range for that lift? He needs the body block. Not going to happen. This Big Daddy waltzes to freedom. At the same time, Kuro and Puppy come in. Gonna get hit by a Crypt Swarm here. Shecho may try to run down the Naga Siren Kuro. Gonna turn around for a net. There's a nuke though! Just short on the damage. 15 damage short of that kill. And the stomp from Big Daddy will secure the retreat. But back to base for Kuro at this point. Are they stacking the jungle? Yeah, they've got one stack for him. That's it. Not a huge amount of stacks. Ancients not being stacked either. I'm still very surprised at her decision to aggro try, or at least aggro with the Naga Siren in this particular matchup. Uh, maybe they do a lot better versus the Phantom Assassin, but now that the Phantom Assassin has, you know, been mid, I'm surprised they actually haven't switched up the lanes. And good news for Secret, I suppose, that if you're going to lose the laning stage, which, I mean, right now it's not a huge loss, but it's going to start ramping up as the Nygma Free Farms. That, oh, hold that thought, Simba! Solo killed by Cheshire Cat top lane. They do have a good comeback lineup. Mass AoE, really good team fight, and just strong control in general. So, if you're going to fall behind early, this is one of the better drafts to come back with. Much better than last game. Yeah, that's for sure. Last game, they really had nothing late. But I'm a bit worried here. This Timber, if I'm, a, if I'm looking at Secret's chances, they do not have a good start here in the laning stage. Look, jump on Day Rai is going to blink to try and dodge the stomp, but now breaks the coil. Stomp could come through soon. They're going to silence him. He's still living. That poor man shield and evasion doing a lot of work for Deira. How the hell is this guy still alive? He survives through it all. One more illuminate. Not sufficient. Secret send four mid. They get nothing out of that one. Jesus Christ, that PA is tanky. That's one point in evasion. Poor man shield, rain of a kill. Literally unkillable. He dodged uh, the Caro Blast too. Very nice play by the PA. Running to the left side of the coil. Yeah, it did break the coil, and the thing is, PR didn't even have much counter gank there. They just TP'd in, and PA was already alive at that. Basically, lived 1v4. Like, the team didn't really do much to keep them alive. That's crazy. Oh, crazy. Is he going for a kill on Puppy, maybe? Ooh, gotta be careful. Yeah, Puppy is very vulnerable to this, this PR lineup in general, until he gets his mono leak per, and four staff, perhaps. The other thing when we look at this Big Daddy Elder Titan Ben is. It's the early 4 stat pickup that Big Daddy normally gets, but he's not really getting too much farm. They're going to try and address that now by putting him mid, but immediately the era will jump in. He's going to dodge away from the stomp. It will still connect. He's got the level 4 dagger. Does he re-engage? Dagger's there. Not enough for the kill. He was. He could have committed. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't. He was hoping for the crit, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, even without the crit, he can still just jump in. What do they really have to punish him? Well... Mercy was shown this day by Dityara. Let's see if he continues to show it to Secret as this game goes on. Still, they're investing a lot and not really succeeding in shutting down this PA. Well, Timbersaw is just left to his own devices. And oh, by the way, there is a Death Prof in this game who had a slow start. Shecho's right back in it. 36 CS. Hasn't died. I mean, a Naga Coddle can't shut down her farm. Yeah. It's 
looking a bit concerning for Secret. All three cores of PR are farming right now. Their Enigma's getting levels in the jungle. He's not, it's not a great Enigma game, but hey, I mean, he's catching up now. Meanwhile, Naga's not farming particularly well. It's, it's still on uh, PA and Timber. They have to transition this early farm into a lot of kills for Secret. If they just played a passive farm game and Secret's really good about dodging their fights, then... Yeah, they get like the double Ravage, the 4 or 5 slot Naga later on. Yeah. Could they, get very rough. They can't trade farm at all. And they have to have very nice wardage by the supports, as well as a uh, very clean and crisp execution by PA. Well, let's see if they're able to snowball it. For now, Cheshire Cat up to another 1100 gold. Probably going to go for that early Bloodstone, Joji by his fast farm. We'll see what direction he wants to take here. Simba also has a tri stack. Yeah, they didn't stack super early, but. Leaving him top lane, he's not going to need to rotate to the Ancients quite as quickly, and by the time he does, they have a stack waiting for him. Just Secret just very... they invest a lot in these stacks, and teams have not really... I'm not... how how difficult is it to ward block this camp? Are there any, well, like, really good spots with the new camp? Yeah, or? I mean, Puppy places it right here, but at the same time, if you place it, like, let's say 0 through 7, yeah, or 30 seconds through 7 minutes, it's they still would have been able to double stack at 8 and 9. That's so true. It's You'd have to go and reward it. It's just, it's a harder to get to as well than the, the old Dire Ancients where you could just be down on this ramp and pop one over. You've got to like commit up a hill to, to get it warded. It's a lot more dangerous. But yeah, we just haven't really seen teams emphasize blocking Ancients the way they used to. It's interesting. I think it, yeah, it's really difficult to contest too. Like usually Tidehunter's not that low from doing it because he's just supremely tanky when doing it, and PR, having really good rune control, Puppy and uh -oh. uh, Kiro. Uh -oh. This could be a, an easy... Well, m not maybe not if Kuro's here. Can he burst him in time? Illuminate's gonna come through. Uh, he can kill Kiro. Oh. Maybe not with the bottle charges now. He's looking a bit too durable. Cheshire Cat would ideally just want a plus one here. But did you wrong? Okay, they're gonna bring in reinforcements. They're smoking up this invis rune. There's plenty of duration left. They'll hope not to get revealed, and they will succeed in making their way up the hill. This is a crucial timing, right as Curl begins catch up. They look to go. They need a lift and probably into a black hole to secure this one. Oh, maybe not. Just a zap and a zip, and down he goes. Easy. Very nice smoke from them. Puppy almost popped it, too. Yeah, he was, like, right around here. Just a little bit short. They didn't even commit black hole, Ben, so they may be able to push on the back of this. They're setting up for a backstab with Suniko. He closes in level 6, and at the same time, they're pushing the bottom lane with the Death Prophet. Everywhere PR turns. Nothing but objectives. They look for Big Daddy, they're not going to find it, but this could be the Tide Turner, quite literally. The double Blink Dagger, one on the Tide, one on the Puck. Now it could get a bit scary for PR if they try to commit to these pushes. This makes defend? PA a lot more vulnerable, too. Won't be able to escape with the Blink Strike at all. Timber saw does not have the teleport scroll. This could be very ugly for Pierre. They don't know about either of these blinks. They're going to start with the song. It clips Ditya Ra. J4 frantically scrambling to, de to retreat, but doesn't look like Ditya Ra gets out here. Silence burst down. No evasion that time at all, really. Coil only on Suniko. Then they ravage. That's three heroes taken down. They'll try for a TP out. Blinding light pushing him back. Too much burst. Much needed kill. Secret strike while the iron is hot and... They bring down three of PR, and now they look for their first tower. A much needed turn. Sleep set up so good. The funny part is that PR were even spread nicely. Like, only PA got caught initially, it just slowly ran down the Enigma with that superior base move speed. You just can't really defend against the sleep unless you have really tanky heroes, or you have a BKB. And PA, not tanky, was initially silenced by Puck. They have pretty nice timing on that, too. They have... It's, it's. They have the potential to mess it up too. They have like a maybe what, half a second window before the sleep ends, or after the sleep ends, and uh, she blink strikes away. Yeah, they didn't have anyone in range that time, which was the the main issue, I guess. She could have blinked to Enigma, but yeah, if she, if he silences properly, then no way. Well, secret used their blink daggers to good success. The coil will cool down fairly quickly here, only forty seconds to go. But there's now two minutes, one hundred and ten seconds, so a little bit less. Where there's no ravage, their black hole is online. The mech is coming in about 700 gold. They'll have their bloodstone soon on Cheshire Cat. It looks like. Well, I guess it could be an eggs, but most likely no. Okay, he's already got soul ring. So yeah, bloodstone incoming. They may have a timing window here, like around 
40 seconds to go on Ravage where they could look to force a fight. There also will, no, will be no song for two minutes. Curious to see if PR feel like a sense of urgency about that or if they just sit back and farm. Mm, well, they'll have exorcism up too for like a next big engagement. So I don't Maybe that's your time, you window. One minute from now, just try to go first. Well, you don't, you don't really want to push into Secret's lineup though. Elder Titan plus Coddle Spam is what Secret uses to defend against a lot of pushes against a lot of teams and is proven to be very effective too. Instantly clears out creep waves with the natural order uh, on heroes too. It's y you can't get hit by the stomp either. If you get hit by the stomp, you're like definitely dead. So I don't know. It's it's just very risky. If they find like a good position to do so when Seeker's not in a position to defend, then I mean it's it's by all means very very fine. But pushing into five on five is just almost certain recipe for disaster unless uh, Secret has no ultimates up. Struggle continues for J4. Man down again. He says he. I think he said he was getting DDoS. Not sure if that's actually the case, but certainly having internet issues. That seems clear. Where's his mech? I'm surprised he doesn't have one yet. I mean, he was shut down kind of hard at the start, but yeah, only 48 CS at 12 and a half minutes as a jungle enigma. It's not. Then they oh, he does have Midnight, midnight Pulse. That's probably why. Yeah. He, he went for that early point of Malphus when he was getting ganked by Big Daddy. Well, he doesn't need the second point. Yeah. Hmm. He'll reconnect. Let's see if we can get this game back underway. I'm sure Secret and PR would both love to actually fight. They need PA to, like, ball out of control, though. And first step is like securing runes for her, and they haven't actually really secured runes. I think Simba's been getting the majority of them at this point, and she, yeah, I mean she needs HP, she needs BKB. Even if she gets BKB, she still doesn't do any damage because uh, it's Tide Hunter, so she also needs damage. Stop. A lot of items need to be built. The attack on J4 continues. Will he survive? You'll have to tune in next week to find out. <laughs> Jeez. Internet issues continue. Can't even Volvo please this one, man. It's, this one's not on them. You're not the only one crying now, Cheshire Cat. Well, I think given that we have no idea how long this one's going to be, and that he's just disconnected again, guys, we're just going to cut it to a break. Really sorry about all the delays. Hopefully he'll sort things out soon. But uh, as soon as he's back in and ready to go, we'll get back underway. Game 3 continues in a bit. We are... Oh, let's just start our record again. We're back underway. J4 able to make his way back in the game. He's going to move out from the fountain here together with Shadeshlow. So, quick recap on where we stand right now. Secret just won a big team fight mid. They used their fresh blink daggers on the Tidehunter and the Puck to do it. Then we pretty much went right into a pause. Since then, Simba has been farming up his arcane boots. They're going to have a window here for about a minute and a half. Uh, more like a minute window, where Death Prophet ult's ready, Ravage is still cooling down, Song of the Siren is still cooling down, and we're gonna find out if they want to do something with that window, or if they just sit back, farm, and, and look for another opportunity. The pressure's on PR to uh, pick and choose the right fights, though, because Secret has the Naga um, combo and superior late game. Enigma with the BKB Black Hole, even with Refresher, is not gonna be the trump card in the late game, it's just gonna be uh, Radius Naga with her five or six slots. That's going to be the reckoning force. So yeah, there's just no yeah. way J4 can guarantee a black hole. There's always our splitter, no matter how ridiculously farming gets, and and the saw and the the net. Oh, they well. find J4. Yeah, and the coils dead. there, and they don't have a ravage, but they won't need it either. Mech delayed, and during this time, they're farming the woods. Karaoke up to 1,500 gold now, clearing out camps, deep pushing the top lane. Even when Secret don't have their alts, it's just very tough to force. Force towers because they have so much wave clear. It's the power of the Keeper of Light, Elder Titan, and and the Naga. Yeah, it, it really is. So they're, oh, and they do they they have to just make some smooth plays. Oh, Kiro uh -oh. getting destroyed. A skirmish at the river here. 
Stomp will catch out Cheshire Cat. There's no coil for 50. We'll disengage, but they're just buying time now for the Ravage to cool down. It's online. Song up in about 18 seconds. And to farm that Relic, which is they're closing in on at this point. Yeah, they need, there. they need like Mech Pipe to push uh, towers. They can even take T1s at this point, which is really problematic when you have a Death Prophet. It's 15 minutes in. They haven't been able to take um, a T1 or her safe lane tower, which is pretty bad. And she's actually in trouble uh, potentially right now. Uh oh, bottom lane, they've initiated here. No Ravage though, Shadeshow got off his Yule Scepter. There was no Mon on Simba, now he gets tossed back in. They might have checked his Mana Pool, seen that he doesn't have it. Now they're going to chase him on the back of this. Still no Ravage, ends up going down. A crucial miscalculation there. So nice Yule's immediately, and then the turn. Yeah, so Nico was really quick about reacting there. I mean, still not a big loss for Secret. All they do is lose a Tidehunter, not for a tower. Yeah, it's not like they anything. committed Ravage and then failed that gank. Yeah, still... And PA has yet to uh, get involved into a kill, too. 85 CS, but yeah, it's just once the Naga gets Radiance, you know that's going to change. And he looks like he will go for the Battle Fury build, so he's aiming to keep up in the farm department now. Claymore picked up. But even with that, it's a Naga with a, with a Keeper of the Light to move around the map. Good luck keeping up. No oh, Ancient Stacks currently, I suppose they can do those a bit later on. We'll see, Ben. I guess they're looking for like a later timing window where they get maybe a BKB, perhaps one more item on the PA. You've got your Bloodstone and maybe the makings of the Ags on Cheshire Cat. Your Mech plus a Blinko J4, one tank item on Shachlo, and maybe the Blinko Rubik. I guess that's the window they search for now. The Hood Pipe window, man. They need it. Yeah. Are they going to go for a Hood Pipe? They should have just gone for a Pipe Rush on the on the Enigma. I don't know why he went for a Mech. Uh-oh, Big Daddy getting crit lorded. That's a double crit from Dityara. Will he make it a triple? No! And then the song ends the fun. At the same time, they go in bottom lane. They have that Ravage still online, ready to go. Coil gonna connect on Chaicho. Yule's already used. They don't even need the Ravage as they look to retreat out. But S4 gets tossed back into the tower. Ravage will fly. He able to, he's able to survive through this. They still need that black hole to come through. It's not gonna happen. Two heroes bite the dust for PR, and they fail on the kill top. Just getting outmaneuvered here by Secret as we head towards the mid game. Wow. S4. <laughs> If he gets crit, he's pretty much dead. And I mean, Dira, he's just shooting out, shooting out stifling daggers. He can't really go in on anyone. Like, who do you go in on? Tide? He's just going to anchor smash you. You're not going to do any damage. It's too early in the game for that. Puck, super elusive. Naga Siren, usually surrounded by her team. So, I mean, there's just no opportunities for him to really do so. When did they pick PA again? It was last pick. It was last pick. Right? I don't know why they picked PA, but. I mean, it feels like if they wanted something... Oh, hold that thought. He's going to get caught out mid by a silence. Big Daddy. He's got a, a spirit cooling down. Let's see if he throws it. Not going to just yet. At the same time, your Rubik has managed to steal the phase ship. Not really the most useful oh, on him. Caught out. Midnight Pulse is there. Malefus coming through. Zap and lift. They'll toss him back. Up onto the high ground. Really nice drop there by Suniko. But I just don't know if they have the burst. They're wildly off the mark on the first Shade Nuke. And then your puck from S4 comes roaring in. Sim able to bottle up on the low ground. Returns with the anchor smash. Gets the kill. Really nice movement from S4. And that spirit hunting for Shade He's going to be able to phase. I think he makes it out. But the spirit takes the quicker path just off the mark. At the same time, they re-engage. Finally, Timbersaw joining a fight. Cheshire Cat gets silenced. He gets illuminated. The blast finishes off Suniko. Collateral damage on the Rubik. And oh, by the way... There is still a Naga in this game. Kuroki all of a sudden getting close to his relic at the same time. Still back in that Radiant Woods. Cheshire Cat trying to duke it out 1v4. Ditya Ra is there, but... Not he can't he can do anything. Do. Did you see how long it took him to kill a Tide? It, it was feels like if this was like a Void or something, who still farms okay mid, that maybe he could offer more. You Chrono, you throw in the Chakrams, you Death Prophet ult. Gives, them, gives you some team fight and reliable lockdown to burst the Tide. Well, it's just someone who or does... Or someone who can fight. Someone who does more than just physical damage. I mean, I guess you have some pure damage from the dagger, but that's not where the majority of her damage comes yeah. from. Yeah. And someone who's... And also a melee... It's also a melee hero. Like, it could have been... I mean, maybe a Razor as well versus the Puck. That could have been pretty decent. Yeah. It gives you some nuke damage, offers you a lot more impact in these early fights, and can just BKB rush and get tanky instead of playing the Farm War versus Team Secret. They're both really vulnerable to the uh, to the uh, magic damage burst, though. That's one of PA's biggest problems, and why I don't think that she's that great this game.
starting to look a bit grim here for Team PR. Because we haven't seen the Naga come online yet. We haven't seen Secret hit their late game stride where they have that refresher on Simba, maybe a Shiva's, the Puck Ags, which is going to be devastating. Versus, like, they kind of have to build BKBs and then the Puck Ag still punishes them anyway. I think it's mostly... And they're just going to get split pushed. It's just that. Naga. Naga with her Relic online pretty much yeah, Who's going to gank her? They have no Blink Dagger on Rubik, nothing in sight. They don't have a Doom. No Global Silence. Nothing really reliable to catch her out. And even if you do, if she's successful at Juki, you could just recall her anyway. Or TP in with the Puck Tide and just turn the fight. On top of that, they don't have any good split pushers. So Okay, with Battle Fury? I mean, Timber Saw's decent, but can't really do it as much as a Naga alone. Well, back to the pause game. So the next match coming up, hopefully with less pauses, is going to be uh, Cloud9 versus VP Polar. But it's a new VP Polar because they lost God Black. Who's playing in Black's of? joining Navi now. Uh, Cloud9 versus VP Polar. No, no, who's playing instead of God Black? I'm not sure. They actually wanted to use Dendi, which was not allowed. Because <laughs> he wouldn't... <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be a full-time member of their team. Um, so we're, we're kind of sorting that out with them now. Oh. There we go. Now we've got some, some delightful music to keep us company here, Ben. They're ready! Alright, we're back into it again. Ravage is ready. Coil up in 25. Secret pushing in again. How do they fight this? They finally have their mech online. PRs they just get blasted off the towers. They're not supposed to be the ones getting pushed and losing their towers. They've already lost two T1 towers, and still we have yet to see PR make a move for a T1 tower. A concerted effort, at least. Losing that T1 bottom was just devastating to them. Like, they, they can't push out that lane safely at all. Yeah, and constantly Secret can be ganking it too. The double blink daggers, map control, they still have smokes ready too in the in the base currently available to be purchased. And then even if you do manage to get to the, the lane pushed out, they'll just de-push it regardless. They're going to go on Dit Ra here. Earth Splitter, not yet skilled. Yeah, they can't really go in. They need like smoke wraparounds, I feel, like from PR, and they can just surround Secret with like exorcism. And someone's going to die to Ravage, but maybe Rubik can steal it and turn around. Hopefully it's not... Um, V P A or Death Prophet that um, takes a spill. Maybe they can burst actually the uh, Tide Hunter down with like Black Hole and or Timber Saw. So they have tools that they can use to uh, stop Secret from pushing them, but they're just farming it up. I think a lot of it is just on the P A. We're hoping to outlake a Managa with just a Battle Fury. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, Kuroki is going to get his Radiance before this P A gets the Battle Fury. It looks like unless there's something on the courier. No. And then you're not you're not keeping up at that point unless you get kills, but it's tough to get kills because Secret are just so good at counter ganking. I mean, even Elder Titan has a Yules. Yeah, no matter how big the PA gets, like at some point this game there will probably be a hex on S4 after his eggs, and then there's still double ravage to worry about. You need a BKB, but you go for one and they'll ha they can net you anyway. Song your team and go on you. It's just not really the kind of game that a PA should be able to carry one v five. Yep. So they need some other some other plan to kill people. <laughs> that's that's what Phantom Assassin does. That's her mid game. It's in the name, fancy. dude. She's an assassin. But she's not the farm the farm assassin. Yeah, they, I think they have to start taking risks. Or I don't know. Maybe they're waiting for uh, Secret to like overextend at a tower and fall prey to a black hole. But that's very high hopes. Our splitter coming through on the Cheshire Cat. He gets silenced top lane, pulled right back in. He will Bloodstone deny. Nicely played. Still out of the game and not snowballing as you would like. At the same time, bottom lane, there's a go here from Kuro. They'll use that blinding light of Puppy. So effective with that spell to try and turn this one around. They have stolen the Dream Coil. It's tossed back the other way by Suniko, but it doesn't really matter when your hero is still trapped within the initial Dream Coil. Now Big Daddy charging into Suniko. They also oh. look for J4. Oh, just a bit He slower. almost got that Yules off. Oh, that's right, he has one now. But like, oh, he's got a stomp. But. Yeah, the uh, the recall, too. They're just fighting un unexpectedly. Three on top, then boom, three on bottom instantly. And they they can't push. They try to group up for a push on bottom. Timbersaw dies, Death Prophet dies, and 
PR looking uh, worse for the weather now. And now they've got a Ravage ready to go. Could potentially be a double kill. If they just bring a single plus one, this hasted... Oh, never mind. Uh-oh. Poor J4. Must be frustrating for him. Yeah, as frustrating as it might be for the viewers, it's even more frustrating when you're a player in this position. Especially when you're losing the game. Just gonna jam out to some quality tunes here, man. I like it. Oh, he's back. Supposedly. We've might be a fake back. <laughs> Ultimate fake back. Man, Tide's really been working out. It's very appropriate here for Fly to be playing. Watermelon nice man. <laughs> yeah, maybe minus the green skin and watermelon effect. back underway. Let's let's see if this Ravage is going to happen. Ravage comes through, connects on two, and then they can go in for the gush as well. And Sonico, he'll get stomped. They're going to chase him back to the base, and I guess it's time to put an end to this Jeopardy music. Easy kill on PA. She's just so squishy at this point. She's farming her Battle Fury, but what's her Battle Fury going to do? Yeah, she, oh, yeah. she still needs a BKB. Then she needs like a, a Manta to maybe dodge out of the net or the you know, not up to BKB just for the pucks on. So there's still the eggs. Like, it doesn't matter what she buys, really. Unless Secret blow their ults and get caught out one by one. Then the PA being farm can make a difference. But that's a lot of ifs. Oh, they're going for a recall. Kill on top. Such Jumps low. Super S4. Chasing after that Death Prophet. Has the Yules ready to go. And it looks like S4 won't go the right way. So he'll make his way up. Still, the damage was... Largely done. They lost the PA again. The Battle Fury is delayed. Meanwhile, the Naga Radiance and Boots of Travel are out. Thought maybe the PA would have the Battle Fury like right when the BOTs were about halfway done, but still farming it, closing in on it. And they're not going to have map control anyway, so unlike the Naga, if you're behind, you can just Radiance farm the side lanes with Riptide, but PA's got to walk to the creeps, and that's going to be tricky. I also think PA is really weak without Wisp. Not like super weak. She's definitely pickable in some situations, but maybe if you have like an ogre, or at least something yeah. to buff her up, or Magnus. That's true. Oh, she's about to die again. Orb comes through mid lane. Dara caught out, and yes. we'll end up breaking the coil, going down in the end. They do not. There's seem no wards. Like, what do you do? Just sit a fountain and wait for Secret to farm the entire map? You got to take those risks, but you got to get wards. Yeah. Spend your unreliable gold too. He has a lot of unreliable gold because he <laughs> hasn't got any kills. Well, I think he wants that Battle Fury, man. He's pretty committed at this point. Well, let's see. Big Daddy posting up mid lane as PR still hold the line near the base. They're not really committing to this push, but they're they're keeping everyone back. While well, Naga Illusions cut the wave's bottom, cut the wave's top. Curl just playing this one very calmly and smoothly. And on top of that, they have a gem, too, already on Kiro. So there's... No wards to let PA safely farm. She doesn't have the tools to even safely farm. And even if she does get the farm, it's not... I don't see her doing any damage in the fights. So she just gets immediately jumped on by Puck. And until she gets a BKB, which is probably like 20 minutes down the line from now, she's still going to be food. But maybe they can feed her some kills or something. Who knows? No, they're going Cheshire Cat now. That Yule Scepter going to set up a perfect stomp by Big Daddy. Earth Splitter comes through as well. He tries to chain away. He'll get out of range of the Earth Splitter, but not so fast, mister, they say. They'll bring him down. Bloodstone was still coin on for 80 seconds, so 
No deny available. Another quick kill. Ravage still online. Coil still online. They can push. And this courier might even get sniped. S4 is just waiting for it. It'll zoom up to the north and then it, it chills on the trees. They're going to scout for it with the spirit. They yeah. get eyes on it. I think it's dead. Uh-oh. Run! <laughs> they netted it for good measure. <laughs> okay. Screw that courier. They do get a tower out of it, though. Finally, Death Prophet able to take another one. And she does have BKB, but... There's still a lot of... Like, we've seen players go BKB and then... Simba just gets off that blink ravage, and it doesn't matter. Well, she still gets wrecked by physical, too. They don't have that much physical, but... Yeah, eventually they yeah, will. Yeah, blink ravage. They also have Song of Siren net focus, as you said. They... Like, what happens if Elder Titan yules you? Are you going to BKB out of it and just waste your cooldown and all of them just run away? That's that's one of the really strong points about Elder Titan with his... uh Oh, nice um, sleep. Poor J4. He has a black hole and mech, but there's no follow-up for this. So Kuro is just going to wait while his teammates rotate around. And Actually, Kuroki doesn't have his illusions out now. Maybe this is a black hole turnaround. No, they're bringing an S4. Silence. Mech. And J4. Done for the count. Still, I think we're yet to see a black hole this game, Ben. At the same time, Big Daddy's setting up. He sees Soneko doing a bit of D ward, and he's going to spring that trap. Uh, looking for more solo kill potential. No stomp, though. Now he'll go for it. And S4, he's back top lane. These relocates just moving him around the world. They'll kill off Soneko. They look for Cheshire Cat. He's able to retreat out. You just can't leave the base if you're PR. You go mid and farm as PA, you die. You go bottom and push as Enigma, you die. You go Rubik and D-War top, you die. You five man, you get slept and ravaged and die. <laughs> so there's... <laughs> nothing but death. Yeah. Um... The sequel to Nothing But Death. <laughs> well, what do they do now? Die? Sit in the base. <laughs> yeah, whatever they do, they're dying, it feels like. Be get BKBs. That's step one. Because then they can five man without the fear of the sleep ravage combo. So, step two. There's still damage. just the blink ravage potential. Yeah. And Simba's going to have his refresher soon. But yeah, I mean, without them, there's just no hope. So. Then Secret don't even have to execute particularly well to win a fight. The BKBs, you at least put them in slightly uncomfortable position. There's going to be a stomp mid lane. Our splitter following up, and they might get caught again. S4 blinking in. There's your dream call. That is an Aghanim's upgraded one. So Shechlo is going to be stunned for a very long time if he tries to leave this. But they'll just stand his ground, look to engage. In the end, the PA does bring down the Elder Titan, but falls once more. Death number four this game. After a very good start in the lane stage, they're even going to buy, buy back on Big Daddy. They want to commit for this one. At the same time, the BKB used by Cheshire Cat, but then Secret just sound the retreat. They'll back off. Net coming through again. Cheshire Cat chaining away. Still looking for that black hole. Big Daddy. This could be a dieback from him. If they catch him out, Chakram comes through. Now the Ravage will fly. Connects on three. It got Soneko most importantly. So no Ravage steal available. Nice Yules dodge from Shadeshlow. Won't really accomplish too much though as the Spirit continues to pursue out multiple heroes. Cheshire Cat still living thanks to reactive armor. And then orbing forward. S4 will get one kill. He looks for a second. Puppy will claim that one first. Four dead. And now they dive the well. That's a team wipe. Not quite to the well, just to the tier 4s. Secret, storming back. And, well, I, storm, I say storming back. They lost Big Daddy, and then he bought back, and they, they wiped them, and GG. Power Rangers are down for the count. They now play the loser of Cloud9 versus VP Polar. Easy win for Naga. Jeez. The PA pickers did not fit into their game plan at all, and I, I don't know if they practiced with the hero or not. Definitely didn't seem like it, but... He has played it a handful of times, but I think they ran it in conjunction with the Wisp before. Yeah, it's it's so weak without something like Wisp or maybe Elder Titan or Magnus, but well, that's that. That's going to wrap up our first match of the day. The next one is VP Polar uh, versus Team Cloud9. It's the other winner bracket semifinal. Winner moves on to play Secret in the winner bracket finals. It is double elimination, all best of three, your grand finals. BO5 no advantage, so... Uh, don't think we have a long break. There's been enough pauses, and this was three games. We should pretty much go right into Cloud9 vs. VP Polar. It's going to be 20 minutes, guys. So, in the meantime, uh, be sure to follow Merlini here at Merlini Dota. You can follow myself at LD Dota. Thank you for watching the Summit 2 by G2A.com. And, uh, oh, before you go, we are doing a giveaway together with our title sponsor, G2A.com. Go to G2A.com slash trip to the Summit 2. Uh, I'll show you guys during the break, and you can enter for a chance to win a paid trip here. doesn't matter where you're from. Everyone's welcome to enter. Of course, you do need a valid passport or visa into the U.S. So we can't provide that for you uh, if you're not from the U.S. and you win. So uh, we'll talk more about that in the break. But for now, it's LD Merlini signing off. We'll be back in 20 minutes. Cloud9 versus VP Polar.